Okay, I think we're live. Welcome Calabasas families, students, parents, um, community members. We're so excited to welcome you all back on March 22nd, next Monday or this Monday. Um, before we start our presentation, just wanna introduce um, who's on the screen right now. I'm Sarah Exner, the principal of Calabasas High School. Anyone can go. I'm Nikki Goldstein, assistant principal of curriculum and instruction. Hi, I'm Logan Fox, Assistant Principal for Safety, Facilities, and Athletics. And I'm Kristen Lapiner, Interim Assistant Principal of Student Services. All right, so we have some information for you all today. Um, we are going to go slow through a few slides just so the information um, is clear. And if at any time you want to uh, return and watch the presentation, we encourage you to do so, so that the first day of school that your student is on campus is a smooth one um, and you feel comfortable being back on campus. So I'm going to share my screen. All right. And I'm going to present. Move this a second. <clears throat> Okay, so as I said, um, March 22nd is our first day back on campus with cohort A. And so if you're in cohort A, you will be on the 22nd. If you're in cohort B, you will be on Tuesday the 23rd. And if you're in cohort C, your first day of school back on campus will be the 24th. All right. So we're gonna review a few things. Um, we're gonna talk about what it looks like when you first arrive on campus. We have a health screening that every student will complete prior to entering campus. We will talk about bell schedules, um, arrival and dismissal protocols, um, what it looks like inside the classroom um, safety wise and what we do here on site to ensure that safety for your student. And then we have an FAQ section at the end um, we've received a few questions, and so we want to make sure that um, questions that we are um, commonly asked are um, answered. Um, and then at the end of the presentation, if you have a question that you um, would like answered, please feel free to email me, um, and we will answer your question. So the first thing that we're doing is we are checking um, students in. If we have athletes on campus who are watching this, we have been checking in athletes every day since um, August um, when our students come on campus. But for students who have not been on campus, this will be a new procedure. So I have two icons here, uh, a parent square icon and a student square icon. And so I encourage you at home, if you have a mobile device, for the students to download the Student Square app on their phone. It's free, um, but they do not need um, to do so um, if they have, you know, photos on their phone. So a parent can complete this survey, um, and I'll show you uh, what the survey looks like in the next slide. But a parent can complete the survey for their student at home before the student arrives to campus. So each day we um, just really encourage you to partner with us to um, have a successful and safe um, drop off and pick up each day. Um, and so at home, please ensure that your student does not have a temperature. Um, you can take the temperature at home. We will also be taking the student's temperature when they arrive on campus. You will then proceed to the Square, uh, Parent Square app um, and you will answer a few questions. Um, does the student feel ill? Has the student been around anybody with COVID? Does the student have um, a temperature? You will answer the questions and then um, the app will give you a confirmation green check. Um, the student can either show their phone with the green check on it. They will hold it up when they come in or um, they can have, they can take a picture of the computer um, check-in um, and show us that when they arrive. Now, if you do not have a mobile device, that's fine. We have um, paper um, questions where students will answer and then we will take their question or their temperature before they walk in. So what it looks like, and I'll show you with my students. So when I go online to my um, 
children. I have two children at Willow, um, a third grader and a kindergartner. Um, I opened the Parent Square app and I see right here a um, orange rectangle that says submit daily health screening. I will click that and it will pull up another um, screen. And it shows you there that I have Claire, a third grader and Andrew that's a kindergartner and I can do them both right there. I will click Claire, I will click Andrew and I will answer the questions. There are four questions. Once I've done that, the third screen will pop up. I think, there it is. And it'll show at the top that Claire and Andrew were both confirmed. And then at the bottom, it'll keep a running log. Um, and so you'll see the green check marks, you'll see the date, and you'll see the name of the student. So if I were Claire, I would walk up to the front of the school, I would show um, my phone, the picture or the um, health screening questionnaire, and then I will get my temperature taken and I will head into class. So when your student does arrive onto campus, we need to make sure that they all are wearing their masks at all times, even uh, as they get out of the car. Students should do their best to maintain six feet of safe distancing. We have reminders all over campus to help them with this. When they do arrive here onto campus and wait to check in, students will stand on a yellow dot until they are checked in. Students will show their confirmation on Parent Square or their Student Square phone and temperatures will be taken at that point. The students will then be directed to go to their first class as soon as they enter campus and they are okayed uh, with their temperature in their Student Square. They will have 30 minute window to arrive on campus beginning with their support period start time. Please note that during this time of checking all students in, our front offices are going to be closed so that all staff can be on hand to help uh, with student arrival and dismissal um, to support your students as they get here onto campus. And just to add to that, we have a 30 minute window, um, but we encourage our students, we have a virtual support um, in the morning from eight to 8.20. And so if students want to attend virtual support, that's fine. They can arrive at eight o'clock. Our doors will open essentially at eight o'clock. We will check them in and they will proceed to their first period of that day. Um, and so they can sit in the class. If that class is the class they want to attend support, great. If it's not, they will still um, arrive at their first period class that day and they will log into their support on their computer. If a student does not want to attend virtual support, we encourage them to come to school around 8.15. Um, that helps with traffic um, and just our expectation is when a student comes to campus, they go directly to their first period. And rather than sitting in the room for 30 minutes, um, they can take their time in the morning and get to school closer to the start of the first period bell. When students do arrive on campus with their student square and with their temperatures being taken, um, they will come through three different entry stations. They'll only need to come through one station uh, where their fever, uh, their fever, where their temperatures will be taken to see if they have a fever with one of our fever thermal scanners or hand scanning device. Any students that appear to be warm will be redirected to individual temperature takers um, to have their temperatures taken again and a possible isolation area with the health clerk, with the health clerk if they are symptomatic. We have a separate site here on CHS campus where students will be isolated and we will call parents to pick them up if they do seem symptomatic. Okay, so uh, like we've said, gates open at 12 and we have three check-in points for our students. So when we look at the school map, um, this is Mulholland Highway. This is the football field. We have three entry points. So we have the H building entry point where we'll say that's check-in one. We have the second entry point where we'll say that's check-in two and that's right by the administration office, right down the um, main corridor here in the upper um, lot or upper uh, field. And then we have the third check-in point which is right behind the lecture hall. So we have three entry points. We do not have the trail open in the morning. Um, the gate by the baseball field will not be open in the morning. We want all kids to come in from the front of the school to ensure their safety, check their temperatures and uh, be able to get to class. 
So when I arrive by foot, car, or parent drop-off, there are a few different locations um, of which I can um, utilize. So here's the map again. And here again are the three um, entrance points. The H building right behind it between um, the H building and the media center. The main office one, and then behind the lecture hall. So if I am a student who's coming to campus, I'm gonna come through what we call gate one. And this is the light on Mulholland. So I'm gonna either come from Mulholland and turn left at that light, or I'm gonna come from AC Stell and I'm gonna turn right at the light. In either case, the students who are driving are gonna proceed down the ramp to the parking lot. Now, if I'm a student getting dropped off by a parent, I'm gonna come from AC Stell direction through gate two and I'm gonna make a right. I'm going to get dropped off at one of the three areas by car. And then my parent is gonna proceed out to Valmar. And that is our exit from campus. So in the past, we've had parents drop off in front of the school and exit out the light. They will not be doing that this time. We understand that this could be an, an inconvenience for you to come out onto Valmar, but we're looking at about 17 days. So we're trying to all work together um, to have a safe drop off. This will ensure that we're quick, there is not a traffic jam and that students can be safe. So again, we have three checkpoints and an area to enter if I'm a student driving and parking or if I'm a parent dropping off my students. All right, so on this screen, you're gonna see our new hybrid learning schedule. Um, so as you can see, periods, zero period and support are both virtual. If students are not comfortable attending class in person, they will attend the afternoon virtual sessions daily, beginning with periods one and two on day one, which is Monday, then three and four on day two, and then five and six on day three, and this pattern will continue each day of the school year. For those who are planning on attending school on campus with their assigned cohorts, please visit the website on this slide for the complete schedule for the remainder of the school year. If you are a virtual academy student taking courses with our on-campus teachers, such as dance, music, language, the arts, special education, you will attend your class during the virtual classes in the afternoon. For the virtual academy students in special ed classes, your teachers will communicate with you if your schedule is different. Next slide, thank you. <laughs> we have three on-campus cohorts. If your last name starts with A through G, you are in cohort A. If your last name begins with H through Q, you are in cohort B. If you are R through Z, you are cohort C. If you're a student in an essential class or you have a sibling, a sibling in an essential class, you're, you were placed in cohort A. Now, Nikki, where would I find this information on which cohort if I haven't looked yet? That's a great question. So if you don't know your cohort, you can go on ARIES and you're gonna click on demographics. And when you scroll down, there'll be a little blur that says special groups and it will tell you which cohort. If you're still unsure, you can always email me or, my, or your counselor and we're happy to assist you as well. So Los Virginis Unified has done an excellent job ensuring that safety measures are in place um, for staff and students. Um, ready to go on March 22nd. Since the summer, they've spent over $1.8 million on PPE, which includes plexiglass dividers, cleaning supplies, air filtration systems, and more. Uh, we have increased campus support personnel to help us with health screenings, cleaning, safety, and physical distancing. And we've also, our district has implemented a safety compliance team that will conduct regular walkthroughs to ensure that all of the health standards are met. And no, um, hopefully you'll find comfort in knowing that our district has had over 2,000 students in TK through third 
um, including high need students back on campuses since November with zero cases of COVID being transmitted. So what have we done to prep our site? Um, in, in the classrooms, you'll find that our desks are spaced six feet apart. We have blue and orange tags on desks, blue for one cohort and orange for the second cohort. Our um, custodial staff are using electrostatic cleaners at the end of each day to make sure that the classrooms are disinfected. And we've also, as I mentioned, implemented a lot of PPE devices. Um, every classroom has a gallon sized hand sanitizer, uh, plexiglass dividers and disinfectant spray and wipes. And just to know, we made blue and orange tags on the desk so that every day we have two classes on campus in that room. One class will sit at the blue desk, the other class will sit at the orange desk so that they're not sharing um, desks. Our HVAC systems have also been updated. They've had custom filters replaced and our ducts and coils have been cleaned. The HVAC systems also have ultraviolet cleaners, which will destroy airborne and surface contaminants, and they are installed in all classrooms. So some of our school day protocols uh, regarding safety. When students arrive to classrooms, they will, as you can see in the picture, sanitize their hands, and they will offer, be offered a sanitizing wipe for their desks. Again, desks have been arranged six feet apart, and students will be... Um, or must maintain physical distancing in the classroom and also in the hallways and out on campus. Teachers will go over classroom expectations and protocols with the students and no meals will be served while students are on campus. However, grab and go lunches will be available to bring home daily for free. Um, uh, our outstanding cafeteria staff will be out front under the flagpole. So definitely encourage your child to pick up free grab and go lunches on their way out. More school day protocols to keep everybody safe. There are going to be no shared items during the school day. So please make sure you send your student to school with their essential supplies, um, like their pencils and notebooks, things like that. And a water bottle. We will not have any of our drinking fountains open, but we will have our water filling stations available for students to use with their own water bottle. There is no food allowed in the classrooms. However, students may eat a snack quickly during the passing period, um, as long as they maintain a safe distance away from others while they have their snack. When wearing a mask, it's very important that your nose and your mouth are covered. Gator masks may not be worn. If you come to school wearing a gator, you will be provided a disposable face mask that you will be required to wear while on campus. When it's time to leave school, all three of the check-in gates are going to be open for students to exit. The trail from the S building to the student parking lot will be open for students to use to go down to their cars, those who have driven to school. For student pickup, cars will park along the curb in front of the school and down the driveway leading to Valmar to pick up your student. All cars are going to be exiting through the Valmar gate. And as mentioned before, if on your way out, you would like to enjoy a free grab and go lunch, please stop by the underneath the flagpole to grab your lunch and take it home. Front desk reminders. The attendance, administration, and counseling offices, as well as our college and career and media centers, will be open daily Monday through Friday from 8.30 in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon. Every staff member will be assisting with checking students in in the morning. Therefore, the offices will be closed prior to 8.30. If you would like to schedule a meeting with your counselor or college advisor, please visit their websites, which are listed on these slides, and you'll get additional um, information on how to schedule an in-person meeting as well as virtual meetings. And the websites for both the counselors and the College and Career Center are on our um, Calabasas um, website as well. 
So we have some questions here that um, I will answer. Um, just things that are coming in through emails, um, common questions as I'm out and about after school talking with students. Um, and so I'll start with the first one. Um, students are asking if they can change their cohorts. Um, and the answer to that is no. Um, we looked at all of our students um, and how to safely and appropriately place students in classrooms um, where they could maintain distance um, and their safety. So at this time, we are not changing cohorts for our students. And Mrs. Exner, do I have to attend both virtually and in-person classes? You do not actually have to attend both. <laughs> so um, how the day will work is if you choose um, to come to school and it's your day to come, let's pretend you're in cohort A, you will attend class in the morning. Um, you do not need to Zoom in or join Google Meets um, with your class in the afternoon. You've already attended class that day. So can I wait on campus for my ride to finish class if I have a free period? You may not. Again, so we're looking at, um, you know, keeping the uh, safety at the forefront of our thinking with all of our students. So um, in the past, we've had the media center open for kids to hang out in. Um, we will not be having that open. Um, again, it's just for the safety of our students. Um, and so if a kid has a, let's pretend they don't have a first period, but they have a second period, they can come during that passing period window to attend their second period class that day, but they cannot hang out on campus during first period, um, they would arrive before their second period class. And what if I have an ECA dual enrollment class? Where's my classroom? So you'll still stay at a distance. Um, we will have our, our ECA um, students um, who are taking more part classes attend their classes virtually. And if my student attends the VA, what does their schedule look like? So as um, Ms. Goldstein said earlier, they will join their classes in the afternoon. They will join by Zoom or Google Meets. Um, and information with regards to what the VA schedule looks like um, was sent to VA families by Ashley Winter. So if you did not receive that, reach out to her, check your spam um, email folder to see if it got lost there. And then what about shuttles or crossing guards for my students? So both the shuttles and crossing guards are um, organized with the city of Calabasas. So at this time, we do not think that there will be shuttles running for our students to take to school. As far as crossing guards, if you have ever driven in the morning down Mulholland towards Calabasas from AC Stell, there is a crossing guard um, on Mulholland. Um, and I believe there's another one up closer to AC Stell. But as far as the crossing guard on Valmar, we're reaching out to Calabasas um, or the city of Calabasas to get a crossing guard down there. But my suggestion to families is to have that conversation with your student on how to safely cross the street. I have it with my, my children every single day. Um, look both ways and only cross when it's safe to do so. And what if I've never been on campus? How am I going to find my classroom? Great question. Um, so I have, if you go in Aries and you click on profile, you will see your course list and you will see the room numbers that your teachers um, will be in. And we um, have campus tours on Friday. Um, March 19th from one to three. Our link crew leaders are going to be walking around uh, ninth graders as well as 10th through 12th graders. Um, so you can see the campus, locate the building and your classes um, in that building. Um, they will not be going into classes, but they can walk around and get a feel for where they need to go on that first day. Um, also, we have teachers around who can help um, direct students to where they um, need to go. Um, they can ask us as they check in We'll all be at the front desk. Where do I need to go? How do I find, you know, the S building um, or whatnot? But we really encourage our students to join um, for the campus tours on Friday. And with that, we're super excited to have students back on campus. It's so weird to have our first on-campus day in March, um, but we really appreciate our families um, supporting us. Um, and we look forward to seeing everyone on campus on Monday. And with that, 
we wish you a great afternoon. Um, and if you need anything, please don't hesitate to reach out.